Sif, the goddess and wife of the mighty Thor, had beautiful and long golden hair. And from all the goddess's traits, her hair was the one that attracted the thunder god the most. But one day, Thor woke up and was faced with a bald woman in his bed and yelled, Who are you, witch? And what have you done with my beloved Sif? The god, stunned, recognized his wife and shouted, Loki! The scream was heard throughout the whole kingdom of Asgard. During the night, Loki, the god of mischief, concoctinated yet another of his pranks. While the goddess was sleeping, he cut her beautiful hair. The thunder god dragged Loki up to his room, where Sif cried copiously. Look at what you have done. How did you dare to cut my wife's hair? What now? Do I have to parade with a bald wife right by my side? Have you ever thought about the possibility of making her wear a hat? Thor lifted Loki from the floor and said, If you do not find a way to make my Sif regain her splendor, I will break every single one of your bones. Considering that threat, the god of mischief started to think of a way to solve that situation, until he had an idea. So he departed towards Svartalheim, the dwarf land. He was aware that the skillful dwarves were able to do anything, but before that, he would have to convince them. Then he looked for the brothers, sons of Ivaldi, who were skillful craftsmen and said, You don't know the latest news. The gods will conduct a trial to establish who the best craftsmen are. And the brothers Brock and Itri said that you, sons of Ivaldi, do not have the slightest chance. That's an outrage. Those pierced clumsy hands will not have the slightest chance against us. Very well, but there is one condition. You have to do three gifts for the gods, and one of them has to be a long golden hair that never stops growing. Loki departed to incite the brothers Brock and Itri to establish a competition. You will not believe this. The sons of Ivaldi will participate in a contest promoted by the gods to decide who the best craftsmen are, and they said you don't have any chance, given that you are nothing but a bunch of clumsy guys. Clumsy guys? Huh. That's quite typical of the sons of Ivaldi, but we will not compete. Everybody already knows that we are much better, so we have nothing to gain. I bet that you are not better than the legendary brothers Ivaldison. I would bet my own head on it. The head of the most elusive of gods seems a nice prize to me. I accept the bet. Loki trembled, but did not step back and accepted the bet. He also knew that Brock and Itri were better than the sons of Ivaldi, but now he would have to use all of his cunning talents to untangle himself from that mess. The dwarves, sons of Ivaldi, started to make their gifts for the gods, and Loki noticed that everything seemed to went well. But the god realized that the other pair was doing something outstanding. Loki then understood he had to intervene. Brock and Itri had already built two beautiful gifts, but they were certainly crafting the greatest of all works. It was a powerful hammer. To achieve perfection, the dwarves had to keep the forge at an ideal temperature, not a degree more or less and Brock did his work by pumping the bellows with great precision. Loki noticed he had to act quickly and turned himself into a large hematophagous mosquito. He flew to Brock and painfully stung his hand. The dwarf withstood the pain and continued his work. Then Loki attacked with an even stronger sting in his neck. The dwarf unleashed painful cries but resisted. The god then decided to attack the dwarf's eyes. He closed his eyes and the eyelids were attacked the agony was unbearable, and the dwarf stopped pumping the bellows. Due to the temperature change, the hammer's handle broke. Loki considered his mission accomplished and went away. The time for the great clash had arrived, and the dwarves, sons of Ivaldi, presented their gifts to the gods. The goddess Sif, wife of Thor, was gifted with new hair made of gold. Seeing the goddess with her splendor back, Loki felt some relief. Odin was gifted a beautiful and powerful spear, capable of piercing anything, and every oath made under that spear would be unbreakable. Frey was given a huge boat, which could be folded so many times to the point where it could fit into a pocket. 
Those were three impressive gifts, much to Loki's relief. The turn of Brock and Itri had come. The latter still had puffy eyes because of the sting. He gave bracelets made of drop near gold to Odin, a material from which every eight nights, new bracelets would fall from it like drops. These could serve as honorary ornaments or a way to increase wealth. Frey was given a huge boar with golden fur, which could be mounted. The creature could fly and never be tired, and his shine drove the darkness away. And Thor's time finally arrived, and he was given a hammer. This is a beautiful hammer, but its handle is too short. I understand your disappointment, but don't judge this hammer by its handle. Its name is Mjolnir, it is indestructible, and its power is almost indescribable. When thrown, it never misses its target and always comes back to its owner. Such a marvelous piece! With this powerful hammer, no giant will be a match for me. Odin, Thor, and Frey agreed that, from all those gifts, the Mjolnir hammer was certainly the best. Despite all the tricks, Loki's plan collapsed, and now his head was demanded as a prize. Ha 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 ha! Now I want your head! Broki said, already sharpening his axe. But Loki had one last play. You can sever my head, as long as you do not damage a single piece of my neck. The agreement says that you can only have my head. You cheater! How will I get your head without damaging the neck? Then Odin intervened. If people paid more attention to the words used, they would never negotiate with the cunning Loki, the trickster god. Broki, to punish Loki, sewed his mouth so that he would never deceive anyone again for a long time. But at least the cheater kept his head on his neck. And the gods of Asgard received magnificent artifacts.